Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to do a knockout design in Design Space. It's super easy and I know you guys have been asking for this for a while since Cricut changed up Design Space. Before we go over and I show you how to do this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's completely free and a great way to help support my channel and what I do here on YouTube. I would love to have you as part of my crafting family. All you have to do is hit that big red subscribe button down there in the bottom and we will be friends for life. Let's go over to Design Space so that I can show you guys how to do a knockout design. It's super duper easy and you guys are going to be so excited to learn how to do this. To do a knockout in Design Space, it's completely different than it was even a year ago today. So we're going to show you guys how to do it a different way and I'm also going to link the tutorial to how to do this in Inkscape which I think comes out cleaner and it's easier but I'm going to show you guys how to do it in Design Space if Inkscape is scary for you. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open a text box and we're going to do this Halloween themed because why not. So I'm going to do Jack and Sally and I'm going to use the I Love Glitter font. So for the I Love Glitter font to get the swirls and the little hearts you use the two brackets on the ends and an underscore in the center. I'm going to go ahead and find my I Love Glitter font. I will link the I Love Glitter font down below. You can get that from defont.com. So now what I'm going to do is letter space this down so that everything touches. I Love Glitter is pretty easy to do as far as the letter spacing is concerned. It seems to space pretty well. Now what I'm going to do is weld this word because this is our centerpiece. So now we need to duplicate this a couple times and one of them is going to stay exactly how it is and the rest we're going to weld together. So I just duplicated a few times. I'm going to move one out of the way because we don't want to do anything with that one and we'll use these three to start. So what you're going to do is stack them on top of each other just so they are just slightly off of the other one below it so that it's making it look a little bolder and you're going to want to do this in different directions. So I went left with the first one. I'm going to go a little bit right with the second one and then I'm going to weld these three together. I like to weld only after a couple of pieces stacked. That way if something goes wrong with a weld it's easier to undo it. So what I'm going to do now is duplicate this chunkier one move a couple of them out of the way and then we're going to stack them so they go a little bit higher this time. So we're going to go stack them to the top and a little bit to the bottom. And you don't want to resize these because they're going to match up with this one. So don't resize these. So we'll go ahead and weld these two together just to make sure nothing goes wrong with that. And then we'll stack this one. And again, you just want to kind of stack them in alternating ways so that they all make this nice thick line. And you're just going to play with it a little bit. And I'll go ahead and weld that one. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this super thick one. And that's why I like duplicating them. I do a couple and then I duplicate and then I do a couple and then I duplicate. Because that way you're not having to stack a bunch of skinny ones to make this super fat design. So I think that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and weld that. And then I'll go ahead and duplicate it one more time just so I can get a really good thick line at the top and we'll go ahead and weld that. Now I like to go ahead and change the color of this one so that I can see what it looks like based on my skinny font. So I want to make sure that this is sent to back so that I can see what my skinny font is going to look like on top of it to see if I want to go any thicker and I don't think it's quite thick enough. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again and I think I want to go a little bit thicker to the sides and I'm going to duplicate it again and we're going to go a little thick to this side. Now this is where I think that Inkscape is really superior because you can see the edges are not really smooth. They're kind of rough. I don't love that look, but again, if Inkscape is something you're not comfortable with, this is a great way to do this. You're just not going to get quite as thick of a line or a look, but that's okay. It's totally fine. It's just a matter of what you prefer and what you like and what works for you. I'm going to go ahead and weld that and I'm going to go ahead and check this 
and see if I like it better. Again, I need to send this to the back. That way this sits on top of it. That is much better. Okay, perfect. Now that we have this part, we need to make the text that goes behind it. So for this one, we're just going to do Happy Halloween. And I'm going to do this on two separate lines. And we're definitely going to change the font because we don't want to do it out of that one. I like to use impact for this. I think it looks really good because it's nice and thick. And then what I'm going to do is align this and center it really quick. And I want to change the line spacing. I want to make that go down a whole bunch because I want these almost to touch. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You could either change line spacing, which takes forever, or you can ungroup to lines over under advanced. I like to ungroup to lines because it makes it a little bit easier for me to move it. Now, Design Space has been a little bit touchy today with some of its things. You can see that for some reason when I ungrouped to lines, it disappeared. So we'll just retype it and we'll just have to do it a different way. So once that's retyped and shows back up, we will just have to do line spacing. I'm going to set it to a negative three and see how close that gets us. I think I'm going to go negative four and see how close that gets us. Negative four is perfect. And then we're going to do letter spacing because I want the letters super close together. And again, it's a little bit slow and it has its moments where it just wants to go a little slow. If you're having issues where your design space is going super slow, I always recommend once you've gotten to this point and you can go ahead and save your project. That way you don't lose all the work that you've done thus far. And you can come back if something goes wrong. I try to remember to save my project at different points throughout my designs because you'll run into issues where something disappears or something doesn't work. And right here we have project not available, project saved as private. That's fine. No big deal. Don't worry. What we can do, we should be able to go back into my projects and it should hopefully be saved. If not, it wasn't that hard. We can totally redo it. But if you run into issues like this with Design Space, what you can always do is just completely close it and reopen and see if that fixes your issue. I'm going to give that a shot and see if that helps with my problems. So we're going to go ahead and reopen this and let's see. It may offer me an update. It may just restart. We'll see what it does. So it's going to restart, which is fine. But you can see it did save our project which is really important because now we can go back to it and customize it and fix anything that it didn't want to fix originally. I'm going to again center this and I may not be able to do this exactly the way I want right now, but I'm going to work on it and see if we can. I'm going to try to ungroup it to lines again and see what happens. Now see this time it worked fine. So it's just a matter of kind of messing with it and seeing what works. So what I want to do is make the word happy about as wide as the word Halloween, just so that they match up really, really nicely. And I think I need to make happy just a hair wider. That's good. And I'm going to go ahead and weld this. The reason we're welding it is because we need to slice it. You can only slice two items. So you need to make sure that whatever you're slicing is welded. So it creates it to be one item. I'm going to make it nice and big because we want this Jack and Sally to go in it. And I'm going to go ahead and send this to the back and we're going to move around. We don't need this in the way right now, so you can move that. So we're just going to use this to kind of figure out where we want it. Now, if we want to resize anything, only resize the Halloween part because if you resize this portion, it's going to not fit with this. You just need to make sure you keep that in mind. Don't resize this, the blue, without resizing the small black. That looks like a pretty decent spot for this. So I'm going to go ahead and select both the Happy Halloween and our offset. And I'm going to slice it. Now there you'll see you have a bunch of different pieces. This is the only piece we need to keep. Go ahead and just select all of that and delete it all. We don't need any of it. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this. Let's do this in orange for Halloween. And we'll leave Jack and Sally as black. And you can move those into your space. And look at that. It's perfect. Again, you can do this in Inkscape. You can do this in Design Space. It's very, very easy either way, but I do think you get a little bit cleaner look if you do it in Inkscape. Now, if you don't want some of these little sections to cut out, 
You see how you have these teeny little spots, a few of them? What you can do is contour them out. So down here in the lower right hand corner, click contour and you'll see these, you've got these teeny little spots. So I don't wanna cut that little spot and I probably don't really wanna cut this little spot or that little spot. So you can kind of go through and pick and choose any of the tiny, tiny spots that you see that you don't necessarily need to cut out or want to cut out because maybe they're gonna be a little bit small and tedious and you're probably gonna lose them when you go ahead and do your um, weeding anyways. And I think it just looks a little bit cleaner without those teeny spots. You can see how much better that looks already. So I'm gonna go ahead and size this down a little bit so I can cut it out for you guys. And then I'm gonna show you guys a quick easy way um, that we're going to go ahead and layer this and then you guys can use this for anything that you want you could do this with htv as well just make sure that you mirror it if you're going to cut it on htv i'm going to use some starcraft hd adhesive vinyl and we are going to go ahead and get this all cut out now again super easy to do if you guys have any questions just post those down in the comments i'm always happy to answer them for you so let's click make it it's gonna show us our two different mats. We have our black for our Jack and Sally, and then our orange for our Happy Halloween. I'm gonna go ahead over to the machine, cut this out. I will show you, let you guys see it cutting. I'll weed it, and then I'll show you guys how to do a quick layer. To layer this, it's gonna be really, really easy. Get a little bit of painter's tape and you're going to tape down your edges of your decal. You can just use a little bit, you don't need a ton. And this is just to hold it down to your table so that it doesn't slide around. You don't have to do this, but it can make it easier. I don't always do it, but with a larger decal and a smaller piece that's going in the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The next thing that we're gonna do is get some transfer tape. This is medium tack from 143 Vinyl. This is my favorite transfer tape. I will link it below. You guys always ask where I get it. So I will definitely link it below. I'm gonna see if I can kind of pull this out a little bit further. Now I have this sticky side up right now because I just wanna cut it so that it's big enough to fit my decal. And I'm gonna just cut it a little bit too big. Now it has a little tail on it and that tail is helpful. So what we're gonna do is place our Jack and Sally over our decal here. And I'm just gonna eyeball this part because all I'm doing is just trying to make it so that the transfer tape will cover my entire decal with the Jack and Sally on it. So that part, super easy, doesn't stick to anything. Now you're gonna go ahead and remove the backing from your vinyl. And now what we're gonna do is layer. So this is just a piece of parchment paper and all I'm going to do is make it so that it's over my decal so none of my vinyl is touching my decal. It's only touching parchment paper. And then all I'm gonna do is figure out about where the Jack and Sally goes, where I want it. And I have this tail over here that's gonna hold my transfer tape down when I pull away. And all I have to do is pull the parchment paper off and then burnish this down. And this one, we don't have to remove the transfer tape from it because it's only one layer. So this one's really easy. You can just trans make the transfer tape. That's your final product. Super easy. Go ahead and remove your painter's tape and peel this up. And then all we're going to do is just trim around our decal so that our transfer tape isn't sticky on any of the parts. You just trim right around it. 
easy as that. And there you go. There is your knockout design that you did in Design Space. Super easy, really, really fun. I hope you guys had so much fun learning how to do this. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays with the occasional bonus live video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting.